Hello and welcome to the second of these options videos for 2021. My name is Matt Halifax and it's my job to take you through the options process this year. In this video, I'm going to talk about some really important information that you need to know to help you through the process and also to finally submit your choices. I also draw your attention to two other videos in the series. One for me, which gives you the background to taking options and the third one from Miss Barnes, the head of year progress leader about how to make your choices. There are also two really good sources of information on the school website, where there's a series of course videos and information, and also your child is invited to the year eight Google classroom. Well, I'll be posting regular links and information for them there. Possibly the best resource is the options booklet, which should have been sent to you. In there, there's a range of information that is contained in these videos, but also page by page, subject by subject, course by course guides to the courses we are running over the next three years for your child. The final thing to point out is you should have received a personalized letter about the options process. As already mentioned in video one, our motto is always giving the best. And we plan to do that for your child through the options process. Here at the Valley York, every child is treated as individual and known as an individual. And that is also applicable when it comes to making your choices. This is the first time your child is able to dictate and determine the subjects they take at school. Therefore, it's not a decision that they should take lightly. And there are many factors to consider. For example, if your child has a distinct career idea already or something they want to do at one of our excellent post-16 providers across the city, they could factor that in now. It's not essential to have that, but it can help shape your choices. It's also worth noting at this point that no exam course is easy. There are no gimmies. They all require hard work, commitment, diligence throughout the whole of the course. As I said, you should have received a personal letter which offers advice and guidance through this process. If not, contact the school. I just wanted to take the moment to clarify some of the terminology that you will experience during this process. We talk about pathways, and this really is the embodiment of teaching every child differently and personalizing the offer that we have for them. There are four pathways which I'll go through in a moment. Each one has been carefully considered when we have I've had a panel of colleagues across the school who have inputted as to what we think the best pathway is for your child through Key Stage 4 and ultimately to achieving the best outcomes in Year 11. I will also talk about a priority choice. The priority choice is the one subject your child wishes to study more than any other as they progress through, if you like, their favourite subject. It's really important to indicate this so that I know where I can try and guarantee the subjects that they want to do. I will also make reference to a phrase called your preference choices. These are the other subjects that you have a really keen interest and in, want to study, but it's not your priority. So explaining the four different pathways. In no particular order, the enhanced pathway is, if you have seen the first video, this is the one that secures the EBAC qualification by studying a language and a humanity. Your child will then get to pick four other subjects of which they will take two. The standard pathway secures the progress eight measure. Therefore, this means that your child will need to pick one from the suite of EBAC subjects. That is not totally limiting them to one they can pick more than that but they have to pick at least one and then five further subjects three of which they will get in both of these extra choices one of them will obviously be their priority choice the supported pathway similarly secures the progress eight measure but what we have here is an additional lesson of maths and an additional lesson of english timetabled each week where we can support the people on this pathway to really hone their skills in these particular subjects, not only with a view 
to make sure that they secure the best possible grades in these subjects, but it also supports learning in other subjects. So the skills that they will learn around uh, extended writing and responding and discussion and formulating an argument in English, as well as handling data and problem solving, prove invaluable across the other subjects that they will be taking. Similarly, as in the standard pathway, they will need to select one of the EBAC subjects and then four more, including a priority of which they will get two. The final pathway is for a small group of students within the year group, and we call this the tailored pathway. This involves us looking at the profile of the cohort and picking particular courses which suit and match the needs of this group. Very much orientated towards securing the best post-16 pathways for them when they leave. There is an element of additional literacy and numeracy to support, but people on this pathway will still get to pick a series of option subjects, including their priority, of which they will get three of them. Here is the list of 20 subjects that you can choose from. You will note that there are a range of GCSE and Cambridge National courses. The subjects in blue are in effect new to your child. All the others in grey they would have experienced at some point during key stage three, with the exception of German, but the principle is still the same in French and the skill set is similar. These new subjects in blue, what we have decided to do is to offer an additional information session. Yes, you can find out about them by watching the course videos on the website, and you can find out about reading the demands of the course in the option booklet, which I urge you to do before, if you want to, and you have a, a, an interest and you are considering one of those subjects, the teachers outlined on this page are running an information and question and answer session on these days so that you can be really secure about the choices that you make if you are considering any of these subjects. So to submitting your final choices, as already mentioned, you should have received a personalised letter. On that letter, it will have your child's name and our recommended pathway. There will be a series of instructions towards the top and a box down the bottom of guidance. There are also two links towards the top and in the guidance box, which when you are finally ready to submit your choices, click on the link and that will then take you to a Google form, which hopefully is fairly straightforward to complete. Just a reminder at this point, we are asking for more than the four options they will end up taking. We are asking for six. And this comes back to the idea of the priority and the preference so that I know which subject I must allocate and which ones they would be prepared to maybe study or not as the case may be. Earlier on I talked about us being able to tailor and treat children as individuals. That is also the case is that I do not year on year produce the same option blocks matching the same subjects next to each other. What I do is I wait for the information that I receive from each particular year group and then design the curriculum based upon what they're telling me. For example, if there is a particularly large amount of interest in one particular subject that historically has only run one option group and this year requires two, I will make that change. So it's very much a tailored and bespoke approach. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do urge you to take your time, do your research, consider all the options, ask lots of questions, because what I'd rather is that you got it right first time and didn't ask to then change your mind once you'd submitted your options form. At the bottom left hand corner of the letter, there is a, a, an opportunity for you to record. I do suggest that you do keep a record of the option choices you finally submit. And we strongly recommend that you don't change the path move because we haven't just come to this lightly. It is a very careful and considered decision about what we recommend. I'm sure you have plenty of questions, but here's two that come up more than any other. The first one is, will my child get, my cho get their choices? I cannot guarantee 100% 
that every child will get the perfect choices they want, but I would do my utmost to guarantee it. This is why, as I said, we run a priority and a preference section. We also have to consider the number of students doing it. Some courses outlined in that 20 will not run purely because in this year group, there isn't necessarily the interest or the appetite for these courses. But what I will also do is I will timetable as best I can and try and allocate based upon what suits the, the most amount of students. And it may well be that your, your child doesn't necessarily get one of their preferences because it matches up with their priority. But I'd much rather know which one they want rather than which one they don't. For the vast majority of pupils, once you turn in the Google form, that'll be it. You won't hear back from us until we send you a letter in June confirming the options choices you've got. There will, however, be a small number. Uh, just to give you an indication, last year in a cohort of 120 odd, there was only six students that I had to speak to individually because it didn't quite work. And that was either a case of the course that they wanted wasn't running, or there was a distinct clash between some of their choices that they did. In all of these occasions, I will work with the family, making sure we find the best and the right solution. The second choice comes up very frequently. Sorry, second question is, will, they, will my child be able to change their choice? Once again, I urge you to take the time to consider everything before you submit so that once you've submitted your child is happy with the range of subjects that they put down of getting any of them in september there is a very short window where if a child starts a course and it isn't quite or isn't what they thought it was or something has changed there can be some movement i'm always reluctant to do this but there can be some movement but that window is a very short period of time because as you can imagine, once we get into the course and we start the learning, it's very difficult to catch up on lost learning. So I'll reiterate that for a final time. It is always better to get it right from the beginning. So take your time. What next then? What do you do? Over the next couple of days, possibly week or two, discuss with your child. And at this point, I'd also point out the value of just eliminating subjects that are absolute non-starter because this will help you focus down on the ones that are a possibility. And you can always speak to your subject teachers. In particular, do your research. And the first point of that is at parents' evening. Talk to your child's teacher about the aptitude of your child to take a course. And remember, parents' evening is now booked online. Read the booklet, watch the videos. And importantly, I suggest talk to colleagues, talk to friends of the family and older brothers and sisters about their experiences of courses that you are considering doing. Look at post 16 courses or even university or possibly job choices that you may wish to consider. And finally, the deadline for your returns is Monday the 15th of March. So please return the Google form by then. I shall not be looking prior to that date. So there is no rush to get it back in. Um, do take your time. If you have any questions or issues during any part of this process, either contact your form tutor, your child's form tutor, or email hello at voy.hlt.academy.